Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an absolute value problem with complex numbers. What are complex numbers? Go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on basics of complex numbers. I also have another channel that focuses on algebra, number theory, and trigonometry and hoping, hopefully a little bit of geometry as well. And that is cyber math, cyber with an S. So to solve this problem, this is a locus problem where we're basically looking for a set of complex numbers that satisfy this criteria, which will give us a curve of some type. It could be a straight line as well or a bunch of lines, but in general, we call them curves. So to be able to solve this problem, even though the name of this channel is A plus BI, we could have replaced Z with A plus BI in general, and that solves many problems. But in the case of locus problems, we're gonna be basically using a different approach, which is replacing Z with X plus YI. By the way, how do we know this is a locus problem, right? Couldn't, just, couldn't this be like an equation? Because it, it is an equation, isn't it? Yes, it is, but this equation has infinitely many solutions. Why? That's a good question, and we'll answer that later, or you'll at least have an idea. But in the case of real numbers, this would be different, right? Think about z being a real number. Then you'll probably find a finite number of solutions, right? And that wouldn't qualify as a locus problem. In the case of locus problems, we could still get a single solution. That would be a point in the plane. But in general, most of the time, you're going to be getting infinitely many solutions. All right, let's see how this works. We're going to replace z with x plus yi on both sides and then find the absolute values and see where we go from there. So let's go ahead and make the replacements. Now we kind of need to organize this a little bit because we want to find the absolute value and the absolute value is found, like for example, how do you find the absolute value of a plus bi? It is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Because when you graph it in the coordinate plane or the argon plane, you're basically looking at a z, which can be given as a plus bi or x plus yi. And there's a real part and an imaginary part. There's an angle, but we're not going to get into that right now. We don't need to. But the absolute value is the distance from zero. And by the Pythagorean theorem, of course, this works in any quadrant, it is the square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, the distance formula, okay? So let's go ahead and put the real parts together nicely like this. And then we're going to go ahead and apply the formula. So the absolute value of the number on the left-hand side is just going to be the square root of the quantity x plus 2 squared plus y squared. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have x minus 1 squared, and you know that it's going to bug me, so I have to fix it, plus uh, negative 1 squared, but I can just write it as 1. Make sense? Oops, that's supposed to be y squared. Never mind. I was looking at the wrong one. It's supposed to be this one. Okay, now we have an equality and we have radicals on both sides. What is that supposed to mean? If you have square roots on both sides, you can go ahead and square both sides. By the way, Notice that the absolute value of a complex number is a real number. So we just work now in the world of real numbers. And when we square both sides, obviously the square root and the square will kind of cancel out in a non rigorous way. And then we end up with square root of, I mean, not the square root of, x plus 2 squared plus y squared and x minus 1 squared plus y squared. And guess what? y squared cancels out because it's the same on both sides. Is that cool? You know what that means? It means that we're going to end up with x only. Does that mean there is going to be a finite number of solutions? Not necessarily. You could still have a infinite, uh, infinitely many solutions, not finitely many necessarily. Anyways, let's go ahead and expand and see what happens. This turns into x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then this turns into x squared minus 2x plus 1. x squared also cancels out, which is nice. 
and then we end up with something like this. And let's put the x's on the same side. This gives us 6x, and this gives us negative 3. And finally, if you divide both sides by 6, you get negative 3 over 6 or negative 1 half. And isn't this like a single solution? Nope, because the y is not specified. Now think about it. Y can be anything because we were able to cancel it out. There is no y in the solution. That means y is free, right? Which means y can be any number. And that means there's going to be infinite limited solution. So what is our locus, right? The locus is basically all complex numbers whose real part equals negative one half. And I'll explain how this works, but before we get into that, and maybe I think we should get into that first, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So we have the absolute value of z plus 2 and the absolute value of z minus 1. Now, basically what happens is if the real part of z is negative 1 half, this will be added to this, and that's going to give us 3 halves. And then here, when we add the negative 1 half minus 1, it's going to give us negative 3 halves. And when we do the square root or the absolute value, it's just going to, they're going to be equal. I hope that makes sense. I don't know if that was a good explanation. But here's what I'm talking about in general. When you get a solution like this and when y is free, it can be anything. You're basically talking about a complex number. Let's say this is one unit. So negative 1 half is going to be here. So we're basically looking at this vertical line. So all our complex numbers are going to appear on this line. Any point on this line re which represents a complex number will be a solution to this equation. Now let's go ahead and look at this problem from another perspective, which I guess you could um, call the second method maybe. Okay, let's see how this works. So we're basically looking at this. First of all, let's define distance on the complex plane. The absolute value of z1 minus z2, z1 and z2 are two complex numbers, not necessarily equal, most of the time different. Uh, this gives us the, diff the uh, distance between these two numbers. Great. So, but of course, subtraction with complex numbers is more complicated. You have to subtract real parts, subtract imaginary parts, and but it's just going to work out at the end. So, what does this mean from that perspective, right? z plus 2 can be written as z minus negative 2. And of course, this is already a minus sign. And I do need a minus sign to turn it into distance. So this basically means the dis distance between z and negative 2. But what is negative 2? Negative 2 is a real number. And on the complex plane, I can basically just plot it as follows. This is negative 2. And the distance between z and 1 which is this. So you're basically looking for a number, a complex number, whose distance from these two points are the same. So that means we have to first find the midpoint, which is this one. And of course, this number, this particular number right here, is going to be the same distance from those numbers, but that's not the only number, right? If you continue like, kind of like a a perpendicular bisector, sort of, right? This is what it is, a perpendicular bisector. Any point you pick when you're connected to negative 2 and 1, which are real numbers because they're on the real axis, the distances are going to be equal because guess what? You're forming isosceles triangles, right? The base is from negative 2 to 1, and the height is the line that we were given by. So, in other words x equals negative 1 half is going to be the solution to this locus problem, but from a distance standpoint. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.